You're listening to the Convene Connections Podcast with your host, Matthew Curry. Good evening, everybody. I hope you're doing well tonight. I'm here with my great friend, Ryan Lowe. How you doing tonight, Ryan? Doing awesome, man. What's happening? Man, I, I'm, I'm just excited to be here. You know, you and I, have, uh, we've become good friends over the last couple of months. And, uh, you know, we're just going to continue tonight. And we're really going to dive in a lot deeper and talk about your story tonight. And, uh, you know, all the great things that you're doing. So first, before we get started, let's just give everybody just a little bit of background about you and where you're from, and then we'll get deeper into your story. Good deal. Uh, I am down here in southern Louisiana, about 30 minutes north of New Orleans, uh, across a little bridge called the Causeway. Uh, I um, born and raised down here, went to uh, started college out in southern Mississippi, hopped over to southeastern and Louisiana State University, got a marketing degree um, from southeastern and after that, just kind of traveled the country promoting Brian Tracy and some other big speakers that are out there. And uh, now I'm here back in Louisiana promoting my own story and promoting my own uh, message and um, uh, getting on great shows like this. Yeah. So you and I have a tendency to take off and start talking about sports. So we'll try to stay a little bit away from that tonight because <laughs> everybody can see in the background you're a huge LSU Tiger. And I'm a tar- absolutely. I'm a Tar Heel, so it's yeah. all good. We're on the rise, you know, and y'all just made yeah. it to the pinnacle last year, so that's awesome. Um, yeah. So let's let's just dive a little bit deeper, you know. Uh, Goya, what is Goya? Well, I uh, was the vice president. I stepped out of the speaking business for a couple of years or several years, and I was the I moved back from Chicago to Dallas, Texas. I was the vice president of sales for a mortgage company, and then jumped into the insurance business with a close friend of mine, one of my best friends, and he and I started a mortgage protection insurance business. Well, it took off, everything was going great. I decided to come visit my family back here in Louisiana, and my sister had her firstborn little boy, Yeah. and I decided that I was going to stay here in Louisiana, and I could work from anywhere at that time. Um, remote, you know, remotely work and just hop back to Dallas whenever I needed to. Uh, so I was here for about six months and then all of a sudden we had to close shop. It was right around 2008, 2009 and the mortgage industry took a hit and all of our clients that were writing mortgage protection insurance just kind of took a dive. So we had to sell off the business, pay off our debts and I was dead broke. I was living with my parents at the time. I had moved back staying at my with my parents to find a house to buy yeah. and all of that went south pretty quick tried to find a job luckily a friend of mine stopped by my uh house one day just to check on me and just kind of you know shoot the bull tell me about his company hiring but it was in baton rouge yeah so i called an old buddy of mine that i went to college with and asked if i could you know uh, i didn't have any money i had a hundred dollars that i borrowed from my brother-in-law <laughs> and went and to baton rouge took this job that i could not stand i was selling telecom yeah. I hated it. I was cold calling. And down here in Louisiana, it's 100 degree heat and 100 uh, degree humidity. It's no fun to be outside just knocking on doors. Yeah. And so I was in my pity party. I was the vice president of two companies, owned a company and was one of the top sales trainers with Brian Tracy. And now I'm back in Baton Rouge, Louisiana, selling telecom. Yeah. So you can only imagine where my attitude and my uh, my thinking was at that time. Absolutely. And I ne- never forget four in the morning, I woke up full of sweat, full of anxiety. Full, I mean, just stressed out and get off your attitude. This message kept coming to me. And so I, the next day I go to that job that I hated, sat down in that cubicle, like Google, get off your attitude. I couldn't find it. Um, so I went to godaddy.com and put it in and all the websites were available. Dot com, dot net, dot TV, dot US, bought them all. Yeah. Turned around, trademarked, get off your attitude. So I have every trademark that you can think of coming to clothing and all of that. And then what I did was, is that I started just, uh, people always ask me, well, Ryan, how, how did you write a book? And I said, the best thing that I could tell you to do is go buy a $2, two inch binder and start stuffing anything that you can think of that is part of that you want to be part of your book. Yeah. And after about a month of doing that stories, I mean, I traveled with Brian for eight years promoting him, lived all across the country, lived in Chicago, Dallas, L.A., uh, gosh, Houston, you name it, Milwaukee. And so got to meet a lot of people. And one of the things that I found was is that 
they all said their success, all these successful people that went to the Brian Tracy seminars and all these people that I networked with and met in Dallas and all over the country, they all talked about how it was their attitude that helped them become successful. Yeah. So when the get off your attitude message came to me, that's all I thought about. All I thought about is where in the, what areas in our life do we have to get off our attitude? Yeah. So never forget, uh, before I wrote the book, I decided to do a get off your attitude bracelet. Yeah. And uh, this one looks a little different than the one that I did. And so I went to uh, and then I started writing articles for a friend of mine that had a magazine here in Louisiana. And it was all about get off your attitude. So I was interviewing people. Yeah. And interviewed just all kind of people. One of the gentlemen that I interviewed uh, owns all the GNCs in the New Orleans area. And he allowed me to put and then a friend of mine owned uh, all the smoothie, a bunch of smoothie kings. Yeah. They allowed me to put my get off your attitude bracelets. These things were selling like hotcakes. They, I was selling 100 a week. Uh, moms were coming in. Coaches were coming in. Managers of Walmart. I mean, you name it. People were just buying them up. And so I, I knew I was on to something. I came up with a definition to get off your attitude, put a little card with it, and sold a, a lot of them. Well, then I had Saints players wearing them. They yeah. just won the Super Bowl. Uh, had all kind of Saints players wearing them. I've got you know, Reggie Bush to... Uh, Roman Harper, all these guys are wearing the bracelet. And I asked them, I said, what, uh, why would you want to wear a bracelet with that message? And they said, you know, Ryan, every time I get down, every time I don't want to go to practice, every time that I just start thinking negative, acting negative, or just speaking negative, get off your attitude. It's just, man, it, it's just your message. Yeah. So I knew I was on to something. So that's why I, I pushed through with the book, um, built the website, started doing speaking events. And, um, and the rest is history. Yeah. Now that's pretty cool. That's really cool because, you know, I think every, every one of us can, uh, you know, we can kind of feel that, you know, that, that we go through highs and we go through lows and ups and downs. And you and I also always talk about, um, how we all have a story, things that we've gone through, things that have been very positive in our lives, things that have been negative in our life. And, um, it's very easy to get an attitude. And to get huh. so yeah. down on yourself yeah. that you yeah. think there's no way up. And, and it's so key that we understand that no matter how bad it is, there's always a way out. There's always a way up, you know? Mm -hmm. so, so what are some of the things, you know, you've talked a little bit about it, but what are some of the things that made you, you know, connect to that? Get off your attitude besides the job and, and, and just, well, the job, but how things were just down. And, and to, that, that, I, I just love the story of get off your attitude. I think it's amazing. I appreciate that. Well, I, I look back. I, I never try to look back in my past. Yeah. I've made a lot of mistakes. I've done a lot of crazy things. I've, uh, you know, you name it. I uh, dealt with addictions. I dealt with depression, dealt with uh, all kind of health issues for the past five years. And I use that as a, uh, a tool. I've been fired. I've been dumped. I've been diagnosed with a brain tumor, diagnosed with, like I said, depression, all these different things. And I just look at those things, excuses, but the number one story, the fun story, and I think I shared this with you the last time was uh, back in high school when I was a junior, I actually got shot with a 12 gauge shotgun. Yeah. And, and what's funny is, is that most people would think I would go in and story, you know, uh, in my motivational talks or my trainings. And I, I really, I, I, I didn't talk about it actually for 20 years until my editor when I wrote the story, my editor was like, no, 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 you've got to put more about this. Yeah. So in the book, it tells you the, the whole story and about how, you know, I use it to how to overcome adversity. When you get knocked on, got, get knocked down by life that you got to get back up, all these things. And um, but the funny thing about it is, is in my talks, uh, I had a mentor tell me, he's like, man, you got to make light of it. You got to make light yeah. of it. And I said, you know what? You're right. So after about two years of talking about it, I would always, my, my fun thing is, is that I, I think God, I had asked God for 20 years, why did I get shot? One bullet went through me, one bullet's still in me. And the only thing I could come up with is that he wanted me to be like 50 Cent or Lil Wayne. <laughs> he wanted me to have a, like some street credit, you yeah, know, some, right. you know, it's kind of like being a rapper. I mean, dude, you can't go out and talk about being a gangster or having fun, you know, if you haven't had any adversity, you know, yeah. being, you know, all kind of fun stuff. And so... I, I think he knew I was going to be a motivational speaker. Yeah. And I think that was part of my story. And I, I learned from Zig Ziglar and a lot of these speakers that I grew up listening to, uh, that got me in the business that, you know, 
Um, and, and it really reminds me when Robin Williams passed away, someone had said, or I read somewhere that it's sad that when somebody goes through something and they allow it to get the best of them because yeah. they don't know what the next chapter is going to be. So yeah. even one chapter's down, the next chapter could be great. And also back to sports, I look at sport. I, I'm not sure if I told you this last time, but I look at life in seasons. Yeah. And if Drew Brees or, you know, LSU or the Saints or whoever, well, whoever your team is, gosh, one year they're killing it, having a great season. And the next year they're horrible. Yeah. And I, I look at life that way because I'm like, OK, if Drew Brees or someone of that nature can go in and ha and play lights out or, you know, Peyton Manning or any of these guys that, that are out there that played played the game, they can have a great game. And then the, the next game, it could be bad. So yeah. or a great season. Next season's bad. You just got to learn how to bounce back. And yeah. that's where I get from sports. I get it from, uh, you know, reading uh, biographies. Everybody's been through crap. Everybody's been through hell. Everybody's been through all kind of trouble. It's the ones that can keep going through trouble, keep going through hell with a positive attitude that makes it. Absolutely. Positive attitude. I'm glad you said that because it's so true. And, you know, I grew up playing sports. We, you know, like I said, you and I talk about sports all the time. And that's just it. You know, you think about it three, three out of 10. If you bat 300 in pro baseball, you're going to be a Hall of Famer. You're going to make it to yeah. the Hall of Fame. Well, look at the, yeah. the the flip side of that. You failed seven times, you know? Yeah. You failed yeah. seven times. I mean, I know a lot of people watching just got done watching The Last Dance, right? I mean, how often did Michael Jordan succeed and fail? Yeah, a lot yeah. of successes, a lot of failures. So I think that's just so important, and that's just life. That is life, right? You know, well, everything. One of, the th yeah. one of the things, though, that we've got to understand, and this is something that I teach, is that failure is part of the success. It is. When you're down in failure and, and you feel like you're failing, that's when you learn. Yeah. When you're on top and everything is going great, that's not when you're when you're picking up things or you're in tune. You're just kind of you're, you're you're reaping what you're what, what you sowed. Yeah. It's when you're down and out and things are not going your way and you just uh, get off your attitude. I mean, it's basically the PC version of get off your ass yeah. and get cranking. And think positive, take action, and just get going. And don't allow – see, I, I, and I'll tell you, in my past, I've allowed people to knock me down. I've, I've allowed people to say things about me, knock me down. I've allowed mistakes that I've had, knock me down. And that is what keeps people in a, in a little four-foot fence, in a little fence. I talk about the African Impala where uh, – it's conditioned to stay in a four foot fence and this little animal can jump nine feet high and 30 feet long. And I talk about how that little animal is conditioned to stay in that four foot fence with no top on it. And the only reason why it's that because of its thoughts and its fears, and it doesn't know its capabilities of what it can do. Yeah. And I think all of us are like that. I think all of us, somebody says something, Oh, I don't like your podcast. I didn't like your mo motivational talk. I didn't like your book. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I remember the first time somebody wrote something negative about my book on Amazon. The first thing I did is I went to Think and Grow Rich on Amazon. And I said, let me see if they have any negative writing. Yeah. Sure enough, they had all kinds. I said, <laughs> if somebody can write something negative about that book, yeah. then you know what? You can write bad about mine because, you know, some of these books that are out there that are phenomenal, somebody's going to find something bad about it. Yeah. And, uh, and there's critics out there. And one thing that I learned uh, from Zig Ziglar take it with a grain of salt, move on. And, you know, crit critics, they almost, you almost feel like they're getting paid for them yeah. putting you down. It's amazing. You've yeah. got to let that just go and keep rocking and keep rolling. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, like we're talking about uh, self-limiting, right? Self-limiting yeah. stuff. Yeah. I, it's all I, I, thoughts yeah. on your brain. It's a thought and it's on the brain. Um, and, you know, I think a lot of times people just do not think they, that they can succeed. Or they think they have to, like you said, they limit themselves in a job. You know, when you talk about entrepreneurs, when you talk about people uh, owning businesses, when you talk about mindset, really get into the mindset thing. You know, you have the limiting mindset or you have a mindset of where you can do anything. And I think that's well, really what your book ties into. Yeah. And, and you reminded me of something that I teach as well is that we have 60,000 thoughts a day. 80 percent of them are negative. Forty eight thousand thoughts a day. It, that's life. You turn on TV, radio. It's even worse now. And so, what do you? What do we are programmed like a computer? Our brain, our subconscious, picks up everything, mm -hmm. even though we don't realize it by watching the news, 
listening to something negative. It could be a song, whatever it may be. And that's the thing that we have to be careful of. And uh, we have two radio stations going on in our mind at one time, WPOS and WNEG. <laughs> and we have learned to crank up WNEG. Yeah. And, and it's just, it's easy. Oh, I can't do that. Uh, and we're programmed. And the reason why I know we're programmed, because if I can go to my, my five, six-year-old daughter and ask her if she knows how to play the piano, she, she will tell me, uh, Dad, no, I, don't, I haven't tried yet. But if I go to my brother or someone that's older and say, hey, have you, can you play the piano? No, I can't do that. Yeah. We, it's conditioning. It's in our mind. And the one thing that I wrote in my book as well that I think is the, one of the most crucial things that we can do, and it was one of the most crucial things that I did when I was writing my book, is I got rid of all the albums in my life. And what I mean by that is uh, a gentleman came in one time at a coffee shop and said, Ryan, you can't soar with the Eagles during the day if you're bumming around with the owls at night. Ah. And that hit me like a ton of bricks. And what the crazy part is, and I'm going to tell you some different fun facts behind the book, I had already named the chapter Soar the Eagles. Yeah, yeah. That's and it was already about a bird, uh, the eagles fly above the rain clouds. And I was talking about how uh, being an eagle, you're alone most of the time. So that's an entrepreneur. And you've got to learn how to fly above the negativity. Yeah. And doesn't matter what comes at you, if it's negative words, negative comments, negative people, it's going to it's in, in 90 percent of the people that you meet are, or 80 percent of the people that you meet are going to be negative. Yeah. Hands down. It's going to be the 20 percent, those eagles, those people that love you, that want to see you succeed, that want to see you kick some butt. Those are the people that you need to be around. It's and so that's how you can rise. Yeah. That's how you get out of a negative environment is you cut people off. I've cut people off i've cut family members off i've cut old friends off i've cut people off where i said you know what tired of the negativity time to yeah. move on there's nothing worse than negative energy negative it's, negative yeah. energy can wear you out negative energy can just drain you and your organization right it, not just you but your organization the people that work with you well one of the, you just reminded me dr steve Bonillas wrote a book called energy vampires and i talk about that <laughs> in my book about how they just Man, you walk away and you're like, oh, my gosh, man, I, you just can't handle it. Yeah. And then um, and when I teach about positive culture or positive leadership, you have to be on top of every single person when it comes to their attitude. Yeah. It's the attitude of the culture of the organization that makes it successful. LSU last year, you can look back at any successful team. There was no person out there that was negative getting in trouble trying to get you know and yeah. in, in, in making a bad name whatever and i see it in a lot of sports a lot of companies you you see a positive culture and it all comes from positive leadership yes. when the leaders are positive when i go into a restaurant or i go into a store i can tell you right how about the leadership yeah. i can tell yeah. you how they're being driven by the leaders yeah and um that's why you see some stores that do great and you see some stores that are horrible when it comes to uh, uh, customer service, leadership, attitude, everything. And it affects everything. It yeah. affects uh, the people that you recruit, the people that you stay, they keep, that you keep, try to keep. Because most people will quit a job faster than they, or quit a, uh, a culture and a, a negative yeah. leader faster than they, they'll quit their job just because of that. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So I was going to, you know, bring up the, you know, vision, mission, culture. And I know you work with a lot of business, business owners on, probably coaching them on that, on how yep. important that positive attitude is in their vision yep. and their mission and their culture of their organization. And it's that, gotta be key. That's the key factor in, in it. Yeah. Yeah. Currently, like right now we're, we're going through that, right? We're going through that as a, as a company where really, and it's not just me, it's not just Matt's, you know, vision, mission, and culture. It's, it's my whole team, right? That everybody has buy-in, everybody has, um, uh, you know, that, factor and all that because if they believe in it and they believe in what's going on around your organization right they have a positive attitude and they look forward to working on it you'll be more successful and about positive communication just like i, I tell the story about jimmy valvano coming in talking about his vision of being a successful basketball team mm -hmm. um comes in talks about how, how they're going to win the national championship you've got a bunch of 18 17 16 year old kids laughing going We've never won anything. What are you talking about? Getting them to put the basketballs down, getting them to get on each other's neck, cut the net down and envision success. But he also communicated. He also told them 
where they fit. Bill Belichick, Nick Saban, not a big fans of. Uh, I mean, I I don't like their teams, but I like them as coaches. Absolutely. Um, but I give credit where credit's due. They tell the person where they fit on a team, what their qualities are, what their skill set is, what they bring to the team. And when somebody can show up every day and know that they're contributing to a successful team, they're going to want to show up. And then also, too, you're building a culture of when somebody does go negative, they're going to go, uh, 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 uh. They're going to police it themselves and they're going to say, no, 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 we need to get, we need to get higher on this. We yeah. can't have this. Absolutely. So it, 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 in, in, talking about energy, we attract the energy that we want. We attract the problems, the successes, the blessings, everything. We attract it. So we've got to be careful on that. And uh, I've seen companies, man, they've got one person. I've seen sales teams, customer service teams, leadership, people on leadership teams. It takes that one person and it's like a cancer that just spreads yeah. right through. And uh, it, it, it can be detrimental to a, a company or an office. Yeah. But that, that's a perfect chap name of the chapter, you know, so with the Eagles, um, because positive energy breeds positive energy. Positive mm -hmm. attitudes breed positive attitude, and it can mm -hmm. it can go the opposite way quick. If Absolutely. It, if it goes negative, it goes negative, you know. And I had a I had an idea too, and, I, and I'm glad I'm glad I thought about this. So I was reading something about uh, uh, table tennis the other day or ping pong, and it, I, I don't know how I came up with this, but you know. That's our mind every single day that when you get a negative thought, and I'm going to start using this in my talks now, uh, I need to phrase it and coin it, but positive ping pong. Yeah. Every time you get a negative thought, you need to swing back with a positive re response. Yeah. And I mean, slam it, slam it. If you ever play tennis or ping pong or anything with a racket, I love, that's one of my favorite things to do is I love just yeah. slamming it back. You know, if, if I'm good, I, I got good at tennis for one time. Yeah. And then I got, and then I got shot and then I never played tennis again. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, that kind of bummed me out, but yeah. I love playing ping pong and I was just reading something about it. And I said, you know, that's our mind on a daily basis. Yeah. Negative thought comes in. What do you do? You sit about it. You think about it for a second. Best thing to do, pop it back with something and say, you know what, you know what? Like, like I said, W N E G is I can't afford it. I'm not good enough. I'm not smart enough. I don't have the degree. I don't have a, we'll yeah. go, we'll make every list. W P O S is, I am good enough. I can't. Aff I'll find a way to, to afford it. I'll uh, study hard. I will, you know, uh, become successful. I am a success. The more you you just keep doing that, saying it, uh, the more you believe it. The more things are gonna kind of gonna come your way. Well, I want to jump in on that. The more you believe it, right? And the more you believe yeah. in what you're, you know, you believe and get off your attitude, right? You, Absolutely. That's something that you, and it's true. I mean, you you can't argue it, right? You know, when you have an attitude, get off your attitude, move forward. You know, so you can't deny that. But if you believe in it and you believe in yourself, you won't give up. You know, if you believe in that mission and, and what you're trying to accomplish, the, that you know, it it's not going to happen all night. And a lot of times people just they just quit. They quit early before they well, they get after it. Well, the reason why is this is that they don't have a plan of action. I just rewrote all my goals down, personal and professional goals. I'm about to do what Jimmy Valvano did and put him back on my three by five card. <laughs> yeah. And once you have a plan, then you know where to spend your time. Then you know how much time to spend on each plan. Then you know who you need to be part of the plan. When I was writing my book, never wrote a book, had no idea how, how it was going to happen. But if you would have met me, Matt, when I was writing that book, come hell or high water, that book was being written. Yeah. I told everybody I was writing the book. Every time I'd go to the grocery I'd go to Starbucks. I'd go somewhere. I feel like, dude, how's your book coming along? And for a good year and a half, I'm going, oh, no, man, I've, I've really got to work on this book. Yeah. But the, but the cool thing, too, was uh, my mentor, one of my best mentors out of Baton Rouge, Louisiana, Julio Malara, told me, he goes, Ryan, go get the cover of the book done first. I said, man, I'm only three chapters into the book. Make it he real. He wrote six, seven books. He goes, dude, make it real. He said, but when you see that cover... He goes, go make copies of it and put it everywhere. I he love said, that. man, when you're brushing your teeth, when you're going to bed at night, when you get in your car, you get in your office, that book was right there. Yeah. And you should have seen. I had people look at me cross-eyed. I had family members go, yeah, right. You're going to finish that book, whatever. Um, you know, because you're, you're looking at a guy. I'm a, I was a CB student. Didn't <laughs> make straight A's. Yeah. I struggled making <laughs> C's and B's. Yeah. 
You know, I, I, I never was a reader until I started working for Brian Tracy. Couldn't stand to read. Don't know how I made it through college. Yeah. <laughs> but I just, you know, I tell people to read a chapter a day, a chapter a day, a chapter yeah. a day. And then before you know it, you're reading two or three chapters a day. And before you know it, you're finishing a book. You, it's like working out. It's like yeah. running. It's like yeah. going jogging. Yeah. But one of the things, though, is, is you got to have that positive, got to have the belief and that belief. I had that belief. I had that vision. Yeah. And one of my other visions was is that I had the vision of me having an end cap and my book being in the Barnes and Noble in Mandeville, Louisiana, where I wrote the book, most of the book. I used to sit there and envision it. And six months later, my book was on the end cap and my book was in the um, was in the window and I was doing a book signing there. Yeah. And I don't say that to impress or say that to, to brag or anything. I say that because that's part of the process. Yeah. That's part of sitting down and going, OK, I see myself making that basket. I see myself yeah, making true. the 12 foot putt to win the masters. Yeah. Every successful person, I learned that from them, that they saw themselves throwing the winning touchdown. They saw themselves catching the winning touchdown. They yeah. saw themselves, you know, running faster than everybody else. I mean, they had, everybody has that in their brain. And the cool thing is, is that your brain doesn't know when you are daydreaming that it, if it's real or if it did, if it did happen or if it didn't happen. Yeah. Your vision, it doesn't know. Listen, so when it does happen, that's when you that's when you kind of freak out a little bit. <laughs> huge part of my life. I mean, really visualization and, and doing all that. Um, my college baseball coach was really big into it. Uh, yep. Being a pilot, you uh, visualization is huge in how we learn how to fly and how we learn how to do things. Um, the other thing is uh, yeah, leading missions. I led at missions in Afghanistan. Uh, I was laid in a corner, laying back in a corner, and I was I had my eyes closed. And I was called the storyboard in my lap and it was the, the flight and I, I was leading and it was a huge flight, big mission. And I was laying back and somebody walked by and kicked me and they were like, what are you doing? I was like, well, I'm flying the flight, you know, because I had to think through the process because if something went wrong, I didn't have time to think about it then. I needed mm -hmm. to think mm -hmm. about it, through yep. it. And just so, but that's yep. so big in everything you, I, I mean, I just, I can't tell you how much of a believer I am in that concept. Just huge. I teach that. I teach that in leadership and sales that before you walk into a meeting, you know, you have a big meeting. I even do it before I go into any motivational talk. I'll take five minutes and just visualize me up on stage, walking up, how the, how the crowd's going to be, how they're going to respond, all of that. And I, I teach that in my sales coaching, sales training, um, and leadership coaching and training that before you go into a big meeting the night before visualize your meeting, visualize, how you're standing up, how you're looking, how you're presenting to people. Sales, same thing if it's a closing uh, appointment or maybe if it's an appointment to go sit down with someone, meet them for the first time. What do you want that meeting to look like? Yeah. And if you visualize it, I would almost say it's about 80 to 90 percent. It's going to happen the way you visualize it. Yeah, I believe that. I, I'm telling yeah. you, so that's so important. I, I can't even tell you how important that is. I, try, I talk about that all the time. A lot of times I'll, I'll go back and I'll think about when I speak, when I go to our speaking thing, I'll talk about that with my coach, my college coach. I mean, we were like out there, literally, he was a Muay Thai kickboxer. We were out there waxing on and waxing off like the karate mm -hmm. kid. But we ended every stretching. We'd stretch for about 30 minutes. We had ending in every stretching, um, you know, before we started playing, every stretch we in with five minutes of visualization. We'd lay flat on our backs, eyes closed, palms up, you know, and he would walk amongst us and say, okay, visualize yourself in your position. People used to think other teams, my brother, we played my brother in college. He looked at, he was like, what in the world are y'all doing over there? Right? So when I speak, I, I sometimes go onto a thing and I take a baseball bat with me and I'll talk about just the little things he taught me. And I didn't, Absolutely. at the time, I didn't realize, I, I thought the man had lost his mind. I thought he's yeah. crazy. You know, think about that being an 18, 19 year old college baseball player going, this guy is off his rocker. But he was so right because that's how I learned how to fly, like I said, and that's how I led missions in the military. And it can be negative, too. And let me tell you why. Because um, there's a golf course in Slida, Louisiana, and it reminds me, I tell this story all the time, when you wa I walk up to the tee and it was water all the way down, yeah, down the left side. And I used to tell myself, I used to tell everybody I played with, oh, I always hit it in the water. I always hit it in the water, and sure enough, man, I'd get up to the tee box, boom, out to the water. <laughs> yeah. And then I started visualizing, nope, I'm going to hit it down to the right, and it's going to land right in the middle. It's going to land right in the middle. And I would visualize that walking up to the tee box, and I started doing that, 
and I noticed that more of my shots were down the middle. Yeah, and, then, and it's that mental, it's that mental preparation. Yeah, yeah. So let's uh, let's go through the book a little bit more. So here's the book. Absolutely. Uh, yeah, tell everybody where they can get it real quick, and then we'll cover it again at the end. You can uh, grab it on getoffyourattitude.com, and what I'm doing tonight, uh, throwing in a free Get Off Your Attitude bracelet, and then also I'll sign it if you'd like to go to that. Uh, website, getoffyourattitude.com, order it, and I or ryancelo.com, I'm sorry. Check out getoffyourattitude.com, also ryancelo.com. You can get that out to you this coming week. I've got a new order coming in. Um, uh, so, yeah. So getoffyourattitude.com is being rebuilt right now. Can't wait. It's going to be out in about two weeks. Uh, putting the final touches on all of that. And Ryan C. Lowe is almost awesome. finished as well. So um, looking forward to all of that. New store, new products, all kind of fun stuff coming down the pipe. Yeah. So so the book, there's 12 chapters in it, right? Um, yep. Kind of, let's, let's kind of just talk about it. Um, you know, you uh, however you want to talk about it, given the overview, you know, Give somebody some of the golden nuggets uh, from the book, you know, that would make them know and understand they need to read it. Well, one of the things that I want to share real quick before I do that, too, is people. Uh, I love sharing the story about how it got published. Yeah. OK. Um, so I decide my wife or my girlfriend at the time. Now my wife uh, gets me an iPhone. I always wanted an iPhone. She gets it for my birthday. So I had all the uh, Saints players wearing the get off gratitude bracelet. I had LSU players. I had all my seminars all the people that I met. So I did an iMovie. So I plugged this iMovie on my Facebook page. And at the end of it, I typed up this thing in a red, white font on a red background. And it said, uh, uh, coming soon, uh, book, uh, get up your attitude. The book is coming soon. Check it out at getupyourattitude.com. So I'm tagging everybody. And I tagged my friend uh, out of Baton Rouge. And I, at first I was kind of like, you know, I don't, uh, you know, some of these people, I don't know if I want to tag them. You know, I, I kind of feel funny, feel yeah. kind of stupid doing that because Facebook was pretty new. And so I was like, all right, you know what, I'm gonna do it anyway. So I already had nine chapters done, had three more chapters to go. I'm just kind of, I'm trying to get the buzz out there, getting people signed up, getting pre-orders and all that. I was going to self-publish it. Well, all of a sudden, three days later, I get a phone call from a national publisher that saw my video on my buddy's Facebook page no and, and signed me up and wrote me a check for all the, the cover, the editing, all the stuff that I already paid for. I was, I was paying for everything on, on myself, by myself. And uh, yeah, they wrote everything, wrote everything to me. And then man, we, we knocked out three chapters and it was, it was like I said, within six wow. months, it was on the, on the cover. And I share that with people because whatever goal you have in mind right now, don't think about all the negativity. I used to walk in. I never forget when I first started the book, I'd walk into a Barnes and Noble and I'm like, how am I going to get this book on here? And then what it happens? All the fear, the negativity, what publisher, then you hear all the horror stories about publishers, you know, that they'll never pick you up and you're a new person and all this kind of, I mean, I heard every story in the book. I don't mean to laugh, but yeah. you're writing a book called get off your attitude and you're on your attitude. You yeah, got, you yeah. got negative attitude towards it, you know? Yeah, because you're because you know why I was listening to all the negative stuff yeah. out there. Yeah. I was listening to people going, man, you know how many books are out there? You know how many motivational speakers are out there? Did you do a motivational speaking in Louisiana? Yeah. I mean, they, I mean, I got nailed all the time for different things and, and laughed, laughed at and and I took it in. I, I'm, I'm a very emotional person. Yeah, I took a lot of that in and was like, wow. And then I met my wife and then my wife has been my one of my biggest fans yeah and that changed it man that she was like no you can get that book done and that really helped me and i and like i said i got around other positive people i got around friends that were like dude you need to get that book done man you got to keep speaking dude you're good at it you know keep doing what you love to do and i just used that as fuel and kept yeah. going so the first chapter is called choose to be positive that's why i did that first we need we have a choice every single morning when we wake up you either can be positive or negative most people, they, they stub their toe, they stub their foot, they spill something on their dress or their, or their jacket, and then guess what? Their day's ruined. Yeah. Instead of just saying, hey, you know what? I am in control of my mind. I'm in control of my thoughts. I am in control how I respond. In my book, I talk about how children react, adults respond yeah. to negativity, but how many adults react like children? Yeah. Quite a few that we know, right? Yeah. While we're on that, you know? that, that topic right there, somebody asked a question. Uh, what does your day-to-day uh, -day look like? You know, what do you do in the morning? So, you know, 
how do you stay organized, all the different things that, that you are doing. So that, this goes right with this chapter. Awesome. So I make it a point, I learned from Joel Osteen that you cannot let the chatter, the negative chatter start in the morning. can As soon as I wake up, the negative chatter kicks on and I'm like, hey, stop, <laughs> stop, stop. And I'll say it out loud, stop. Yeah. Here we go. Here's what we got to get done today. And I'm thinking about all the positive things I've got. But then also I've got this routine that I walk around my house in the morning. First, I make my bed. Uh, every single morning, I'm, my, my wife and I, we make our bed. Uh, well, usually I make it. She's up and she's she's uh, with my daughter already. I'm, I make the bed. I clean up everything. I go feed the cat. But then I walk around my house and I open up our blinds and I start the day. The sun comes in and my attitude is that I'm going to talk about, I'm going to think about 10 things that I'm grateful for. The attitude of gratitude is the most powerful. Absolutely. If you want to attract more in your life, the attitude of gratitude is it. Yeah. That it, 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 right before what you got, watch the things that pop in, things that you don't even need, want, they just come out of the blue. And um, and so I walk around the house, I do that, I have my cup of coffee. First, the second thing I do is as soon as I walk in, I don't look at an email, I don't look at my phone, I stop doing that. I start, I open up the Bible, I read a chapter uh, every single morning. As soon as I'm done with the Bible, then I look at my to-do list that needs to get done. I circle five things that I know that need to get done on a personal and a professional level. And that's what gets done for the day. Yeah. By two, three, four o'clock, whatever time I'm finished, my daughter's home now, I'm going to spend time with her. That's cool. I'm going to ride bikes. I'm going fishing. I'm doing something fun with her, doing something outside or doing something around the house with her or my, or, and my wife. We ride bikes because that is a full day right there. That's a full day to me that I'm not going to walk away from my life going, man, I wish I would have spent more time. Um, and then also, too, um, I get in a chapter a day. I, I've got a couple of hundred books right there. I've got three books sitting right there that I get into. I, I read a chapter a day. It's on coaching, leadership, money, uh, real estate, all these different things that I'm trying to learn. Yeah. And um, I, I try to do that before I'm done. Before I'm done. Yeah. Yeah, that's really cool. So that's perfect. So let's get to the next one. What's next? And and one last thing too yeah. is I make sure that I plan my day the next day for the next day. Yeah, that's I good. don't walk out of my office before I know what I, tomorrow looks like. Yeah. What are my what are really my top five things that need to get done? Because we try to do a hundred things in one day, and then what we do is we do all the small things, then the big things don't ever get done. Yeah, absolutely. And we're we're really not getting the high value tasks. So, uh, so read every day, focus on high value tasks. Um, and th those are some of the things I do and have that grateful attitude every morning. And that's how I get started. Yeah. It's beautiful. That's really, really cool. That's really cool. So the second, second chapter is going to be uh sword with the Eagles. We talked about that. I love being around positive people. I make sure to like, if I'm on a drive today, I was driving to new Orleans to bring my niece, uh, drive back. I made a phone call there and a phone call back to two people that are positive. Yeah, that's right. We're talking, they're entrepreneurs. They're talking about their business. They're talking about, hey, what's going on? I talk about mine. We we all, you just get pumped up because you hear about their success or their success stories. And I'm going, yeah, all right. Yeah. I've got to be like, and uh, we have our little power. We have our little, uh, you know, little uh, uh, pity party for one minute. We'll, we'll yeah. allow each other to kind of say something negative, yeah. you know, real quick, but then we jump right back and try to stay positive. Um, and then the other thing too is dream out loud. The reason why I named it that chapter was because I think when you have goals, people say, Oh, keep them to yourself. No, no. I share them with people. I yeah. share them with the right people. Yeah. I don't share them with everybody. I share them with the people that I know that are going to uh, cheer me on. And I'm, I do the same thing to others. That's what coaching is. And let me tell you, if I wouldn't have told people about my book and certain people, I don't think it would have been written. Yeah. That's I right. don't think it would have got it would have got done. So and dream out loud is getting up and reading your goals every morning as well. I, I take a look at it. Like I said, I'm about to type these out. I redid them. I do them on. I redo them every quarter. Yeah. And um, and so I just redid them yesterday. The other thing is uh, get on with it. Yeah. The chapter on get on with it is, is because um, when my grandmother passed away, um, she's in a mausoleum in New Orleans. And to get to this mausoleum, I don't know if you've been to a, a, a cemetery in New Orleans, but they're like small cities. Yeah. I mean, yeah. some of these people have like burial sites that are bigger or uh, are bigger than some people's houses. 
And one of the things that I do when I go through the mausoleum, and I still do it to this day, I did it last, look at other people that have passed away, and I look at their their dates. Yeah. And I'd walk in, and I did that. My grandmother passed away in 1988, and I've done that ever since. And I see their beginning date and their end date, and I think about what they did. Yeah. And it also reminds me that we're not on this earth that quick. Yeah. And the and the and so where I got on with get on with it, I had a time chapter. I could not come up with the name, and I was watching Walt Disney's uh, biography. Yeah. And his brother said that Walt used to walk around and say, "Get on with it, yeah. get on with it." He was always yeah. like, "Get on with it." Yeah. And I was like, "That's it. That's my yeah. chapter." That's really cool. So um, the next one, get on with it. The other one is um, get past your past. Yeah. Got to drop it. Got to drop the baggage. Got to drop everything. Uh, don't, um, what I try to tell people is you can't bury it. You've got to make peace with it. Yeah. If you bury it, it'll keep sprouting up. Yeah. You got, you got to make peace with it and move on. Yeah. Listen, we yeah. all make mistakes, right? We all have yeah. to learn, learn from it and move on. Right. Yeah. We're, you're going to make mistakes. Yeah. Yep. You make it. Hey, it ain't the end of the world, right? We're still not the end of the world. You're still don't. there. You're still moving on. Um, and, and failure, like I said, is part of it. You got to yeah. get out there and fail, and, and then you figure out what to do. I've been doing this for 15 years. Oh, man, I bet it can be you know? 10, 10. Yeah, well, and, yeah. yeah, so you and just. I'm still learning, still yeah. learning marketing tips and social media tips and videos. I mean, I've, I've, if you go back and look at some of my videos, I was showing my daughter the other day. These videos are horrible. <laughs> yeah, that's Horrible. Right. I think you know what? They worked at the time, and yeah. they, uh, you know. It is what it is. I look back at them and never forget. I did my first motivational talk in New Orleans. And I thought it was horrible. Five years later, we're eating dinner. And one of the couples at our dinner goes, gosh, I know you. And said, you spoke at our association meeting. I thought it was wonderful. For five <laughs> years, I would tell myself, yeah, it was horrible. It was my first one. I Do put you... it all together. <laughs> okay. This is, I got to tell this because this is, uh, it's so funny along these lines, but so I spoke you know, speak sometimes I, I did for a long time. Cause that's what I was doing at the time. But I speak in a flight suit, right? I'm a pilot, right? Yeah. So I wear a flight suit. And I remember I was standing a, bit, uh, a pretty big conference. It was about, uh, it was a medical conference. It was about 600 people in the room. And, um, so I'm standing out there and we're just talking cause I'm, I'm next up and all that. And the doors open, it's time for a break. The doors open, people come out and somebody goes, and you just felt like you arrived. Somebody goes, hey, look, hey, look, that's Matthew Curran, you know? <laughs> that's awesome. Yeah, it, was, it was funny. All right. So, and also, oh, this one, I love this one because you kind of did a TED Talk a little uh, about the power of a smile. So, the next one is. That is my favorite chapter of the whole book, yeah. Just Smile. Yeah. Um, I, I, I talk about that in all my motivational talks, uh, all my trainings. That is the power of a smile that it's the, it's the best response to negativity Yeah. when you're yeah. down and out and yeah, please. Um, when you have a chance, uh, yeah, check that. out my Ted talk. Yeah. It's the psychology of a smile. Yep. Uh, I got to do that last year. That was a dream come true. Um, because I think that the power of a smile and, um, the whole funny story about a smile increases your face value. Yeah. Um, I stole that quote. I put it in my book. I thought it was mine for like, probably about three or four months. And then come to find out, I stole it from Steel Magnolias no. the movie. <laughs> and uh, Dolly Parton says it right in the movie, uh, smile and increases your face value. Yeah. But no, I talk about uh, the acronym of a smile in the book. Stop and think what you're going through when you're going through a problem. Stop and think what you're going through. And then also to forget that, forget that it's a problem. I look at problems as growing opportunities. Yeah, absolutely. Any yeah. adversity, anything. And I'm sure you, you probably talk about this, or if you if you don't, I would highly recommend it. Brian Tracy talks about this, you being a pilot on how a plane needs uh, friction, needs oh, it has the, to have. The, yeah, to have it to go up. Absolutely. And what do you call that? I can't think of that right now, but needs. Yeah, uh, you got to lift. You got to have lift. And, um, but uh, needs that, that power it against does. it to yeah, lift. Absolutely. Yeah. And the most people that are trying to lift, like you said, and they feel that 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 pressure that once they try to lift off with their business or lift off with their speaking or whatever, a couple of months into it, a year into it, they quit. If yeah. the pressure gets too much, they drag. can't do it. Drag. Yeah. And <laughs> um and but you need that 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 wind, that high wind, that pressure to go to to fly up and move forward. And 
I tell people all the time, stop and think what you're going through, identify the solutions, learn from what you did, and then enjoy the outcome. And that's the acronym of a smile. That's all. And uh, that, that's one of my favorite chapters. Yeah. No, that's awesome. Yeah, that's awesome. Uh, this next one, uh, I got to say, I love this. So uh, act in faith. Oh, that's probably even, yeah, that's, you've got to uh, believe, repeat, and uh, believe, receive, and repeat. Yeah. And faith, I can tell you, so my book, I, I had an editor. He, he decided that he thought he did a great job. He gave me the book, my book back. It was complete junk. No. I'm like, goodness gracious, I paid all this money to get it professionally edited. And I had uh, sentences doubled up. I had all kind of crazy stuff. And I'm sitting here in my car one day going, what am I going to do? I got to turn this thing in in the next two weeks. I remember, uh, and this is where faith kicks in. You've got to, I just was saying, I never forget, I was saying a prayer, just going, all right, God, I, I, I've got to get this done. Who can I get to help me just edit it? I want to, because when you're putting a book out, you don't yeah. want it to be junk. You don't oh, yeah. want it to just yeah, be something. There. I know some authors that are out there, man, they just push books. And I just go, you know, I haven't written a book in 10 years. And people are like, when's your next book? I said, when I'm ready to write the next book. Yeah. Because it takes, it's like having a child. You can't just yeah. throw it out there. So anyway, um, I'm, I'm like, all right, God, I need help. What am I going to do? All of a sudden, it, this idea comes to me that a friend of mine that had the magazine that I was writing for was telling me about a lady that used to email him and like rip him apart because his, uh, his grammar in his magazine was horrible when he first started. And so he had the lady's name. I called her up and this lady was God sent. I yeah. got to meet with her and she sat down with me for over a hundred hours. We went page by page, word by word at her house and, and cleaned that whole book up. Yeah. Isn't that cool? And, and, but you've got to have the faith and you've got to believe and have the faith that you're going to get whatever you got done. Yeah. That's so all. It, it's gotta be, it's gotta be in there. And you gotta, I, my thing is prayer and you've got to thank God for the, the things that you want coming down the line. Yeah, could not agree. Thank with you. you. Thank you for the people that I'm going to meet. Thank you for the books that I'm going to write. Thank you for the yeah. motivational talks that I'm going to do and the training that I want to do. So, yeah. Can I tell a 30 second story? See this paint behind me? Just got done. You see our yeah. shoulder right here? See that? There's a cross. When the artist delivered it to me, um, and you know, everything was convenient, it's very faith based. Uh, when the artist delivered it to me, she got out of her car and she was excited. And she goes, you won't believe this, Matt. Um, she goes, you, you're not going to believe this. And, uh, she said, I, you know, a lot of paint splatters on there. She said, I threw black paint towards the splatter on the thing. And she said, I first, when it hit it, I thought I made a big mistake. It was going to be a big glob. She's like, Matt, it was a perfect cross. She's like, it literally was a cross. She goes, I could not believe what did happen. You know, and, and I'm telling you, you, you have faith and you, and you work, you know, you and know. I'll give you, I'll give you another quick story too. And I found that, uh, I just saw this this morning. I was digging through some stuff. So one morning I woke up once again, three, four in the morning. I never forget. I just decided to write my book and I was like, gosh, you know, God, give me a sign. Is this what you want me to do? Is this something that the, the road that you want me to travel? And, um, I opened up my grandmother's Bible that my oh. mother gave me. I had this, the old one with the zip. Things pretty much like falling apart. I unzip it. This is four in the morning. I unzip it, and this is in there. This was for her. Uh, my sister gave gave her this. Yeah. This attitude. Wow. It says one part at one part at a time, one day at a time. We can accomplish any goal we set for ourselves. Today, I will do one small task that will contribute toward the achievement of a life goal. What wow. are the odds that a bookmark of <laughs> attitude is in my grandmother's Bible? I'm telling you, that is it. Yeah, so, um, that's so awesome. Yeah. Have a wealth of health. Got to have, got to be healthy. Um, past five years, I've been dealing with a lot of health issues. Um, when I wrote the book, I was going 100 miles an hour. Um, always healthy. Never went to a doctor. Never had to go to a doctor. Within, right after my wife and I got married, I uh, got diagnosed with sleep apnea. Diagnosed with thyroid. Di diagnosed with a brain tumor diagnosed uh, clinical depression, all these different things just kicked in. Uh, I started gaining weight, all these different things. And for me struggling for the past five years with my health, I can, it, it, like when I, after I wrote that chapter and then gone through what I've gone through the past five years, 
I couldn't be more of a fan or more of a uh, someone that you've got to stay healthy. Yeah. You can't run a business. You can't do. You can't be a great dad, great mom. You can't be positive. If you're feeling bad, you know, get with someone that yeah. a dietitian, a a, 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 a a trainer, join a gym, whatever it may be. And I'll tell you, I got back in when we, this whole COVID thing started. I got started riding a bike, started running again, started just kind of doing push ups and all that kind of stuff. And because our gym closed, and one, I noticed once you feel better about yourself, that confidence, yeah, it, it just it just exudes, and you start doing better things, and you start feeling better. And uh, but you got to eat right. You've got to exercise. You've got to. Yeah, you got to have your energy. When you, do. you don't have energy. You, you can't get anything accomplished and it really, it, yeah, it's right. a hinder. Yeah. yeah. Especially if you're trying to build something, trying to stay positive, yep. you got to get that focus. And, and if you want to be a great leader. You've yeah. got to be the one leading. And when you're down, it, it's tough. Yeah. Yeah. Make money do good. People have a, uh, the wrong attitude about money. I hear it all the time. People are like, Oh, money is the root of all evil. No, it's the attitude toward money is the root yeah. of all evil. If you don't yeah. have the right attitude toward money, then guess what? If you're going to, you're going to swindle it away. Use it for things that you're or that are not good. Uh, of course, money is not going to be your friend. Yeah, and you've got to learn how to make friends and have the right attitude with money, yeah. and learn how to learn how to just be good with it. Yeah, and of course, it's taken me years to figure that out. <laughs> yeah, uh, you know, I mean, I, I do. Uh, it took me all through my twenties and some of my thirties to figure that out. Yeah, and but to start a business and to really. I had one of the guys I coached the other day. He's like, "Man, he goes, can you, can you train some of these salespeople on how to be great at with money on a on a commission base?" Yeah. I said, "I've been doing it for 15 years." Yeah, that's right. He's like, "You've got to, you've got to know how to use, yeah, your money correctly." And uh, but you just got to have the right attitude toward it. Well, I'll tell you, one of the cool. I, I interviewed somebody a couple of weeks ago, and uh, when they were talking about money, they're, they're like, "Make friends with your money and be yep. proud of your money." Yep. And, and yep. great things with your money. That was her message. Yeah. It was just a wonderful message. Yeah. And, and one of, somebody had said you can help more people when you have money than if you're poor. Yeah. I mean, I think it was like Abraham Lincoln or someone had said that where you can't help anybody when you're poor. Yeah. And I'm not saying that to, to knock anybody. I'm just saying bust your butt, you know, and, and do what you want to do with, you know, with your money. But at the same time, you have the capabilities of helping people. Yeah, help people. That's awesome. Yeah. Uh, say thank you. This is a great one. One of my favorites, it reminds me of my grandmother, uh, always say thank you. Anybody that does something for you, tell them thank you. Even if it's something bad, they do to you. Yeah. I just had something, ha ha uh, uh, somebody did something bad to me last Friday. And I told him, I said, thank you. Yeah. You just <laughs> made me realize what type of person you yeah. are. Well, and so it goes, it goes, it goes both ways. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Tell you, I, um, I always tell my kids and, uh, you know, my, my family, I'm like, yeah, always be the bigger person. Always lift people up, you know. And actually, that's going to get into the next one uh, yep. chapter. But this one also, always lift people up. You know, say thank yeah. you. you know, yeah. just, you know. You've got to have the attitude of gratitude. you got to thank people for uh, what they've done for you in, in your life. What you uh, – and it could be anything. It could be a word. It could be, you know, just anything that they've done. And, you know, and they've been there for you. Um, but also too, you know, we don't see it anymore. So when you open the door for somebody, they walk right through and I'm like, hey, <laughs> yeah. really, you yeah. know, or, you know, they purchase something or you, you purchase something from somebody and they don't say anything. I'm like, I could, uh, I could buy this online, but I decided yeah. to come in your store and buy it. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. You know, but, but I think it's just something that we've got to just keep, uh, teaching others yeah. and we've got to just remind people, remind ourselves. To do yeah. It. That's so important. I like this one. Be someone's miracle. Yeah, that's that's a big one. Just be there for people. Uh, you know, whatever they're going through, big, you know, big problems, little problems, whatever it may be, just listen. Yeah. Just, you know, it, you could be a small problem. It could be, a, you know, it could be it could be anything. And uh, like I said, it could it could be a word, a yeah. positive word to somebody. It doesn't have to be a big miracle. Miracle comes in miracles. I say come in all shapes and sizes. Absolutely. And they come from everywhere. And every day has a miracle if you look for it. Yeah. So I think it's our job to lift others up. I think it's our job yeah. to be good people to others, you know, and I, I really do. I mean, I think that's a, that's what we're here for. And if you're not doing that, you're missing the mark, you're missing the boat, you know? So yeah, yeah be, be somebody's miracle. I think you never know when you're making somebody's day, they're ha yeah. they having a bad day and you might just change their day around. If you, you bring that positive influence to them. 
Yeah, positive act. And, Let me put it and, 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 you know, the smile thing. You yeah. smile at somebody, you know, they, they, most people don't, uh, don't understand that when you smile at them, they think that you're, you're up to something. But, uh, yeah. but a lot of times, though, if you just smile at someone or just say, hey, I hope you're having a great day or something, it's amazing what, how that can turn somebody's day around. Last chapter, make it happen. Just do it, man. Yeah. Like Nike says, just do it. Make it happen. Get out there and just do whatever it takes to make it happen. Make yeah. it just, you know, hands down, uh, put the action behind it. Get off your attitude as an action. It's yeah. not, you know, me telling you to get off your attitude or telling anybody watching this to get off their attitude. It's me looking in the mirror saying, Ryan, get off your attitude. That's why I wear the bracelet. I've worn the bracelet for 10 years now. Yeah. And I, I look at it. I don't look at it because it's a cool bracelet or it is a cool bracelet, but it, it, yeah. it's not something because I want to wear it to, to be cool. It's I look at it and go, you know what? Stop being negative. Stop yeah. thinking negative. You know, rise higher, get higher, be positive, you know. And so it's a great reminder. But I think um, I think you've got to just put action behind whatever your plan is. I can write this plan all day. If I don't put no action behind it and be positive about it, then it's not going to happen. Yeah. So and, and like you said, so with the Eagles, find the right people, get your money right, get your health right, have a, the right attitude towards uh, helping others, being a miracle. So if you see how I put them in order, yeah, it all comes down and it all comes back to that last chapter of, of choosing to be positive, getting around positive people, um, you know, saying thank you, getting rid of all the baggage that, that you, you know, all the failures and everything. And you, you get all of that set in place and you just go for it, man. Yeah. It's just just throw all the chips in and, and just say, you know what, I got this and I'm going to make it work. And and if you look at if you look at any successful person, they basically did what I what oh, we just covered. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah and they have to stay positive. If you get negative, you're you're, you're just doing yourself in. That's but you got to get around those eagles, though. Yeah, That's the big thing. Oh, I mean, is. just by being on your show and being part of the groups that we've been part yeah. of and the different things that we've done in the past in the past month. Yeah, that just it just ignites you. You know, yeah. it just ignites you to, to want to be better and say, you know what, Let, let's make something happen here. Yeah. And we're going to be making stuff happen. We're, you know, we're going to be doing a lot of things together, uh, bringing together yeah. uh, speakers. And, you know, Ted, yeah. that's going to be old. It's going to be, you want to be on a convenient <laughs> real Absolutely. talk. Absolutely. Convenient real yeah. talk by Matthew Kern and Ryan Lowe. That's, that's, Absolutely. that's going to be a coveted spot people are going to be after. There's no doubt yeah. about it. Yeah. It's going to be and one that, of the big that's ones. real. That's happening, people. So yeah, we'll, it's going to happen. We'll uh, so that's good. So, yeah. So we're coming up at the end. You know, I hate it because yeah. I always have such a great time talking to you and interviewing you and uh, just, you know, taking your inspiration. But um, it's the book again, uh, everyone. Um, tell them again. Got to move it over just a little bit. Right there. Right there. Yeah, like right there. Yep. There yep. you go. So um, tell everybody where they can find it. Yep. Grab it at uh, go to RyanCLo.com. Like I said, get off your attitude. Get off your attitude.com is being rebuilt right now. And mm -hmm. I can't wait for that. Uh, sign up for my newsletter, um, but also to grab a copy. I'll sign it. But if you'd like, it's on Amazon, audible.com. It's on Kindle. It's on all the, all the big, you know, things. So if you want to read it on your iPad or your phone or whatever, you've got that. And also it comes in audio. So audible yep. has it as well. So, uh, if you're, if you don't want the, the hard copy and you, you like the other ways, definitely. And then also check out, uh, my YouTube channel, get off your attitude. I have an Instagram I post positive things on that and then also to Facebook page. So if you just Google get off your attitude, you'll see all the, the things pop up. Let's not forget about that amazing community that's coming and convening communities. Yeah. Yeah. That's another <laughs> thing that uh, I'll be working on and convene is a get off your attitude community with trainings, coaching, um, uh, different topics in there, uh, blogs, all kind of good stuff. So I yeah. actually have my, my to-do list on that as well. That's right. <laughs> That's a that's long right. to-do list. Yeah. That's all right. We're getting it done. But you're making such a difference in yeah. people's lives, man. I, I really appreciate it because uh, I, I think your message is such a positive message, you know, and I think too often nowadays people just get, they get on their attitude, right? And they yeah, just- Yeah, we get down, we get oh. negative. It's easy, easy these days. It's a COVID thing. Yeah. It's easy to see what's going on on TV and what's going on in our country right now. Why not be the shining light? Why not be the positive person to change things and not follow the masses? Yeah. Be the one to step out and be positive and say, look, let's we, we need to make a lot of changes in this country and let's do it. But let's be positive about it. And I think everybody has that opportunity to do it. Yeah. 
All right. Well, man, we're up at uh, nine o'clock. I, I, I appreciate you so much. I look forward to continuing to work with you and uh, continuing to grow all these things that, uh, you know, we're collaborating on and working on. It's going to be great. Uh, everybody, make sure to go out and um, and get the book uh, where Ryan said we'll make sure to put it in the write up of the of the podcast and everything. Uh, but, man, I'll give you the last words, Tizo, before I give them the last words. Just thank you so much again uh, for doing everything that you do. It's awesome. What do you got, Ryan? Close us out. I was going to say, I think everybody has a choice every single day to get off their attitude. Like I said, every morning, wake up, have a positive attitude. There's always somebody that's got it worse than you. And we have an opportunity to get on the phone, get, you know, get on the phone with somebody positive. We have positive things to read. But one of the things that I'm learning that I'm reading right now is when we want to set goals and we want to lift ourselves higher and help others, look at your daily habits, make sure that they're positive, make sure that you're doing things that are positive, high value tasks every day and watch your goals come. Keep your faith, keep a smile and watch and keep your energy positive and watch the amazing things that happen in your life. I wish we had more time because there'll be we might have to do a part two because there's yeah, a whole yeah, yeah there's stories yeah, that I could tell that you think it's got I would say uh, what a coincidence. And a friend of mine said Albert Einstein said once there are no coincidence coincidences. It's God staying anonymous. Yeah. I, and I, let me tell you, it, I, I could story after story after story about how things came to pass. Well, but we, once you set your goal, once you set your passion, once you set your energy towards something, watch it happen. Yeah, that's right. I believe you 100 percent. Stand by for part two because we will do that because I yep. think you trade those stories and I think it'd be a very interesting so, show. So thanks, Ryan. Uh, thanks for uh, being a part of this. Thank you, my friend. Talk to you soon. All right, everybody, have a good night.